Guys, welcome back to Needham. Uh, today we are gonna be looking at some of the structural detail walls. I'm gonna explain what a shear wall is and why it's important, but I'm also gonna show you how we're handling our interior vapor retarder and how we're making it continuous from first floor to second floor and where the interior walls impact the exterior walls. I'm also gonna give you a general layout of the first floor and how things are gonna to come together. Plus there's a couple surprises uh, in the layout that we're excited to share in a future episode. We are moving through first floor wall framing. A couple things that we're doing and also kind of show you uh, some of the details that we have to pay attention to. A lot of structural in this house. For example, this wall right here has plywood on the back side, uh, and this is actually an interior wall. So this is the second office in the home, um, and all of these walls have plywood on it, and it's a shear wall. So let me just kind of quickly explain. A shear wall is to help with shear force. So whether it's wind or something pushing on, on this wall in either direction, the structural engineer has determined that this wall is important to have shear strength. So typically they get that shear strength by adding plywood and then calling out your nailing pattern. Your nailing pattern is gonna be how many nails and how far they are spaced apart. So for example, you have six inches here uh, and here you actually are about every four inches. Uh, so they're gonna call that out on the plan. So you'll see a lot of these interior walls have plywood, so hopefully that answers your question. I know a lot of you guys have asked, why, hey, why does that interior wall have plywood? Uh, it also is really nice when you start hanging millwork and things, so you don't have to add additional blocking, it works really nice. Um, coming into, this is our front entryway. So we have three windows facing the street. Our, our entry door is actually off to the side. Uh, there'll be a little bluestone patio, <coughs> little bluestone patio here uh, in between the two swooping arches on the front of the house. You'll come in through this door. You'll come, you'll actually be facing this beautiful staircase heading up to the second floor as well as uh, the future finished basement. Uh, but you're getting a ton of light and the view of the, the street out those three windows. Again, you're dealing with a lot of structure. You get uh, built up headers here. Um, and then we have our double story LVL walls. This one was up before and this was, was the one that was laying on the ground uh, in the previous video, but you can see now that it's installed, this is a really tall wall. It's gonna have a lot of um, detail on it and a lot of sunlight coming in through this side, which our sun is typically over there. Um, and then coming across the back, we wanna make sure that this wall is nice and flat, hence why we're using the LVL. Now, you probably see the Sega My Vest, uh, My Rex, I apologize. Mike is going around. We got a uh, one of our carpenters on site installing this prior to our interior walls being installed on top of our exterior wall. And the reason being is that we want this interior vapor retarder to be continuous. Uh, typically what you would deal with in this situation is once this is insulated, you would come across, you'd staple it and you'd have to stop here. Uh, and then on the other side, or maybe you tape that and then on the other side, you'd only be able to tape to the stud. Now, does that work? Yeah, it does work, but why not try to make that continuous? So what he's doing is that's installed before this interior wall is uh, placed up against it. And you can actually see it over here, how they're prepping for it. So this wall right here has a piece. So w once this right here, once there's a plate on this wall in preparation for this door, I believe this is an archway. Uh, once that plate's here, it will cover over, but now that piece is completely continuous. And once that plate's on, we can just peel this back. It's just temporary stapled. Peel that back, fill our, our stud cavities with our insulation, and then come back and make sure that this uh, Myrex is continuous all the way throughout. This is, these are the details that we're working on with Sega. Sega's rep's been on site, making sure that we're hitting these details and making sure that we're as continuous as possible. Uh, the reason we want that continuous layer is because it's going to perform better. We really wanna make sure that this home is airtight uh, so we can control the climate inside and prevent the climate from the outside from entering. Now, a lot of you guys say the homes don't, the homes need to breathe. You guys talk about it all the time and all the comments, oh, it needs to breathe. We're building them too tight, et cetera, et cetera. I want to address that and I've addressed it before. When we, we compare what we're building today to what we were building in the past, it's very different. And everyone's like, well, the homes dried, you know, the, the, the homes uh, were always dry and the walls were leaky and that was the best part of it. And it wasn't the best part of it. And, and I, want, I want you to think about it this way. We don't wanna be filtering air through a wall cavity and then supplying air to the inside of the home. People say the homes are too tight, the air is dry, there's no ventilation. Well, we combat the ventilation with an ERV system. 
energy recovery ventilator. That means it's exhausting stale air at a constant rate and bringing in fresh filtered air. Now the alternative in these old homes, if the wall leaked, you were bringing in fresh air through the cracks and crevices of the home or around the windows. Problem with the cracks and crevices around the windows and the walls is there's dirt and there's crap in there. If you've ever opened up a wall, you see all the crap in there. So think about that outdoor air filtering through all of that crap and then coming in and supplying your fresh air uh, in a leaky house. It's not the way we are building homes these days and it's not the way we're designed. Also, back then, well, heating the, heating the building uh, costs a lot less and they weren't as well insulated. Nowadays, we have code requirements on making sure that the R value is high enough. So we're really insulating these homes. So we don't, we're, we're, we're less likely to get that air coming through these cavities anyway. So rather than rely on, you know, uh, a particular number of cracks and crevices to filter the, the air through, we're using an, an energy recovery ventilator. Yeah, energy or an HRV, which would be a heat recovery ventilator. You guys want to know what the difference is? I've done a video on that before. Just look it up below. Um, so that is why it's important for us to create an airtight home. We want to be able to control the environment inside and we want to prevent the environment from outside from getting inside. So I'm standing in the future living room here uh, and I'm actually walking through what will be a future fireplace uh, and then into the kitchen. Now you have the three windows in the entry here. This right here is actually going to be a bre breakfast nook and this looks out onto the bluestone patio. So you have your entry to the right to the home, uh, of the home, and then you have this secondary door that goes into your single car garage. Single car garage, double car garage over there. Not just a one car garage in this home. Despite how many times I tell people that, they tend to forget. Uh, and then this is the kitchen. And big island here, really great view of the backyard at the kitchen sink with flanking cabinetry on either end, and then a built-in range, and we have this awesome plaster hood detail uh, and we have a little bit of a surprise in, that's going to be tucked in to the hood and to the left of the range. Um, you'll have to stay tuned for that. And then as I walk through here, uh, we have a powder room over there, but we have a secondary powder room entry to the single car, another, another entry to the single car garage into the home. Uh, we have another powder room over here. And one of the biggest requests that the, one, uh, the homeowner had, the husband specifically, was a private urinal. So this powder room will uh, open up to a traditional powder room and then it will have uh, a urinal closet in there as well. Uh, it'll be our first and I'm excited to, to, to share that as I know he is. Uh, and then we have a essentially a mud room that leads out to the back door. Uh, this triple window here is actually our pantry. Uh, and then what we have here is basically a homework center. Um, you know, a key drop, you're gonna come in off your, your side door or from your garage. And this is where you can drop your, your keys, your mail, sit down and maybe sit down at a computer and make sure, uh, you, or make sure the bills are paid or whatever, uh, but also have kind of a running uh, cabinet for future storage. Uh, and then looking over here, this is another patio that we have. Uh, they'll have a patio right here with the swooping roof actually hanging out uh, beyond it. So if you can kind of envision where that green pipe is, uh, we have a patio that comes out to about that point and that will pick up a um, downspout off the roof. Uh, and this will go out to our parking court and then you can see our two car garage over there and our single car garage there. So similar to, going back to the, the, the Myrex, similar to the walls, you can see that detail is there. But Mike's are also putting it over the top plate. Uh, and you can see here where it goes from the interior wall going to go up and he's actually wrapping it across the top plate and then on the rim joist of the floor system. Now same reason he's doing it there is why he's doing it here. What happens here is this allows us to insulate this wall cavity, go up, tie into that piece of uh, Myrex and then it continues up all the way to the next wall. So he'll flap that back over top the second floor system, the second floor, yeah the second floor system and then up the second floor wall. Now you have that continuous barrier all the way up from, from this wall to the next wall. Now you guys are gonna say, well, that's maybe redundant or maybe you don't need to do that. It's an unnecessary detail. Maybe, but we're looking for the, continu the, the continuous control layer. And to do that now in this phase is very little amount of work. It's just making sure that we're on the same page with our framer who, you know, Dimitri and, and the guys at ChevCon are great. They're easy to work with and they understand the importance of this detail and they're working with us to make sure that gets done. So 
they are getting this LVL and a, and a handful of other LVLs in place today. Uh, and we're gonna be going into our second floor system uh, here in just a few days. Um, so guys, stay tuned. Appreciate you watching. We'll see you next week.